Today I'm going to show you the mercury beating heart, which is one of the very few known oscillating chemical reactions. To get started, I simply add one milliliter of mercury to a watch glass. On top of this, I slowly add dilute sulfuric acid until the mercury blob is submerged. I'm not exactly sure what the effect of acid concentration is here, and I just used a 6 molar solution. Now I simply add a few drops of a 0.1 molar potassium dichromate solution, which immediately forms a thin, rigid layer of mercury oxide around the blob. When I then touch the blob with an iron nail, the oxide layer disappears, and the blob suddenly contracts. When the nail is removed, the blob relaxes, and now a thinner oxide layer begins to form. This can be repeated several times, and if the nail is positioned just right, the blob begins to oscillate like a tiny beating heart. What's happening here is a repeating series of redox reactions that begins when the dichromate comes in contact with the mercury. In this first reaction, dichromate is reduced to the chromium-3 ion, while mercury is oxidized to mercury oxide. Mercury has extremely strong surface tension, which causes it to beat up into a tight ball under normal conditions. However, the mercury oxide layer reduces this surface tension, which causes the ball to flatten out a bit. The mercury oxide then reacts with sulfuric acid to form mercury sulfate, which is reduced back to metallic mercury when it comes in contact with the iron nail, with the iron itself being oxidized to iron 2 sulfate. The reduction of mercury sulfate back to mercury instantly increases the surface tension and the blob rounds back out, only to immediately flatten once the new oxide layer forms. Since the blob gets taller when it's reduced and wider when it's oxidized, the nail can be positioned just right so that it barely touches the mercury when it flattens and separates when it balls up. This repeats in a reciprocating redox series that causes the beating oscillations. Now, as with any chemical process or demonstration, there are a few tweaks that can be made here to tailor the reaction to your needs. The first and most obvious thing you're probably thinking is, how can I make this safer? If you weren't thinking that, let me be clear that this reaction is by no means safe. Potassium dichromate, as well as mercury salts generated by this reaction, are extremely toxic and carcinogenic. So this version of the beating heart reaction should only be performed if you genuinely know what you're doing. To make this all a whole lot safer, gallium can be used in place of mercury. You just may need to melt it with some warm water first. Gallium performs nearly the same, but the lower surface tension of gallium means you might get a less symmetrical shape. Potassium dichromate can also be replaced by any number of oxidizing agents, but unfortunately none of them work nearly as well. 30% peroxide was the first alternative I tried, and while it did work, the oscillations weren't nearly as dramatic. Permanganate can also be used, however this compound is not stable in acidic solution, and will rapidly decompose into messier byproducts, which more easily obscures the target reaction. As for the acid, you could almost certainly get away with using a concentration lower than 6 molar, I just tend to overdo everything. Anyway, one final thing you might have noticed that I'd like to comment on is that at higher concentrations of dichromate and with perfect positioning of the nail, the mercury blob will oscillate so quickly and aggressively that it will form a sort of triangle that switches direction back and forth rather than the gentler up and down beating from earlier. I think this looks pretty cool, and it isn't something I've seen before when I've seen this reaction in the past, so I figured I'd comment on it. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, or at least found it interesting, and as always, I want to thank all my incredible patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital and very appreciated. And to everyone else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.